Hello, it's Virginia from the Yellow Farm, and I wanted to encourage you today to try some lock spinning. Uh, I have some fiber here, uh, two sort of different types of fleece. They're both uh, Wensleydale. You can use Teeswater, you can use anything with a nice lock, um, Border Lester, Blueface Lester, Cotswold maybe, even Lincoln, you know, they all have different characteristics and maybe a different handle, but you can certainly play with all of those um, uh, different types of fiber uh, for lock spinning. So I'm going to assume that you really haven't done any lock spinning before and um, I just want to show you that when you're choosing your locks for your first time it's nice to choose something that's maybe four, you know, three to four inches long, maybe five, not too terribly long because that's going to give you some trouble your very first times uh, with trying to relax enough to let the texture of the locks just form its own yarn. Um, once you get the hang of it, you could do anything you want. This is just a stepping off point to get you started. So I've chosen this, this fleece uh, as opposed to this one. This is a little bit longer staple as you can see, but it also has a beautiful lock formation. It's not going to be real easy uh, unless you open it up to, to spin this, you're going to have to open these locks up like this, which is kind of a shame. This would have been lovely to use as a tailspun uh, because the lock is so has such a nice structure. It's almost a shame to waste it by opening it up. But there again, you, you do exactly what you want to to, to get the, the texture that you want. So I'm going to add that in. But I have to do a lot more work on this type of a lock than I do on, say, these, which are really easy. They, they almost fall open. And I'm going to prep this fiber. Now, I, I don't usually do this when I'm lock spinning because I'm comfortable with the process. But if this is the first time you're attempting it, you know, you're going to find that all of the bumps and the, the curl and the, the strange feel of something that's not a roving going through your fingers and into your yarn is is going to be something to get used to. So for your very first time, I choose a fleece that you can open pretty easily, like this, that's going to have a lot of sort of grab, that the fiber is going to fall open, and it's going to stick to itself and grab pretty easily, so that when you're, again, when you're trying this for your first times, so you, you can kind of get the hang of it, you have some good success, and then from there you can go forward and use absolutely anything you want to, and you'll 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 have this down. It's not rocket science. It's uh, really very simple. It's just that most of us that started uh, learning uh, to spin on a little more traditional uh, fiber preparation, like a roving or a bat. Uh, we, we tend to want to create only a very smooth and regular yarn and to do something sort of bumpy and textured is a little scary at first and our fingers and our minds say, oh my gosh, don't do it that way. So this will help you. So prepare your fiber by just pulling all as much of this apart as you can for your first time uh, so that it's fairly easy and it doesn't make you panic when we go to start spinning it. And as I say, you don't have to do this. Uh, once you get the hang of, of spinning from the lock, you, you, know, you can do it any way you want to. So we're going to take this big pile uh, with a few of the long black pieces in there. Let's add one more in here. I'm just going to separate that out a little bit there so that we can see those as we go over to the wheel. Okay. Okay, so here we are at the wheel. Uh, I'm using uh, uh, an, uh, an Aura, which I really enjoy. It has nice big orifice, so you can do some uh, textured yarns and they can get on feet on. You can, you can try this on any um, wheel that you have. Uh, just if you have a wheel that has a very small orifice, make sure that the yarn you're trying to work with, that you, you, you do have it to be fairly fine so it, you don't have a lot of catching through here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to do this fairly thick and heavy so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I've started some. You would just start with your lead. Uh, I'm spinning clockwise and I'm just going to start. I have quite a bit of tension on my wheel because I don't want to overspin all of this. So I do have some tension, but it has to be really comfortable for you. I think, you know, the scary part is if your wheel is set a little too tight, a little with too much tension, 
and you're panicking because you're getting stuff going on and into the into the drafting zone where and into the spinning that you're concerned about and I think that's the biggest fear for for most folks to get over when they're doing something like this because we're so used to wanting to have something very uniform and our fingers are so used to trying to prepare something in the drafting zone that is even and 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 doesn't deviate and that's wonderful but it doesn't work very well for this technique. So this is kind of a good exercise in letting go <laughs> um, and uh, so all we're going to do is if you were just starting this on your lead you'd find a section of uh, fiber that has some uh, openness to it and I'm going to do like a, a worsted join I'm going to hold this uh, at at right angles to my yarn until it catches and once it catches I'm just going to close it in and feed it in uh, like you do for a regular roving. Now I don't like to over twist my singles too much uh, unless I know I'm going to ply them uh, and you certainly can ply these. So for your first attempt and we're going to assume this is your first attempt at, at spinning locks. Your first attempt you don't want to be too tight with the spin. You want to Get, to the, get yourself, I think, to the point at first where you're comfortable and you don't panic about the things that are slipping through your fingers uh, and worry too much about it. You are going to hold the, you know, the drafting zone is going to be right here between your two fingers, as they, it usually is. I like to work fairly close to the orifice, but again, work with what, however it, it works best for you. These should be, for your first time, these should be separated a little bit more, I think, because it makes it a little easier when what you're feeling here as you're drafting feels to you a little more like roving. Um, so I'm going to join in a little more of this uh, sort of open, fibery lock formation. And I'm going to draft it almost as though I'm drafting roving. You know, you can see I'm pinching it uh, here in my left hand. And I'm just smoothing this out a little bit. You have to be careful that you're not trying to make it too thin or too smooth. You have to try to take a deep breath, pedal very slowly, and let yourself let go of your twist sometimes so that you don't panic. <laughs> and so you're allowing some of the texture that comes along. See, in these lovely locks, you're just kind of allowing them to twist in. Um, it shouldn't be panicky. It shouldn't be fast. Uh, until you're comfortable with it, but just starting out, it should feel sort of relaxed, and it's kind of exciting to to have something with so much texture that you're you're kind of letting it create its own its own way through your fingers into the yarn. If it starts to get too thin, just take a little fuzzy piece, hold it to the right, uh, like a, a worsted join. You're going to let those fibers catch in. And then just relax a little bit. I'm even going to let go and let the spin start down into that drafting area so that it catches whatever's coming along. Um, it's a very forgiving way to spin, obviously, because you have so much texture and you have so much fat to thin, thin to fat. Uh, I'm sure you know that if it gets really thin, you might want to put a little extra twist in it. If I get down here to an end, say like this and oh my gosh I've forgotten what I'm doing and I don't have anything and it's very thin over twist that because the over twist will, will give it enough strength that you could just hold tight to it put something else in there hold tight to it and then start your relaxation technique again and breathe a little bit relax and just try to let things flow through your fingers you do get the feel of this pretty readily but it is very scary to let go it's very scary to sort of trust that this mass that you have in your hand as you draft it back a little bit will hold together and will form something that you're going to like uh, as the end result uh, and to give your fiber the freedom to sort of create its own way. Um, you can do a fairly thin spin if you want to. Uh, you know, if you're doing this for your first time and you find that you're trying to, you're, you're trying to pull this fiber down to a very, well, see, look at that do that. I have to pause there. Okay. So 
if you're having trouble uh, and it's just too lumpy, open your file, oh, take a section of, of locks and open them more. Open them right up so that it almost feels, what you have in your hand just feels like a bit of sort of textured roving. And when you look at it, you can see that all the fiber is really open in your hand because that's going to give you a lot of grip. See how this is, if you can see the lock structure in too big a piece, you want to open it up because that's going to let you for your first time be a little more successful in getting this onto your wheel and getting the feel of it. And that's all spinning is, is a feel. And you know once you get the feel of this, you'll say, oh, of course, I could, that, that's really fun. And you'll go off in your own direction. So again, be successful this first time. Open these locks up as much as you can with your fingers. You know, some people use a dog uh, comb or a flick to do this with. You could do that too. I like using my fingers. And then again, add a little bit of that fiber in a random way as a worsted join and then bring everything down together and then just draft it. And you'll find, wow, I can draft these locks.